Hello and welcome to this new video. I'm very glad to be presenting this video uh, to all you today, especially those that are translators or have an interest uh, in the translation industry. Uh, we'll be talking about the topic of custom machine translation or CMTs. And this is a very hot topic since uh, there's been much talk about uh, the emergence of neural machine translations and the, sh the change that they bring. Well, custom machine translations brings a very new workflow uh, to the table and a new way that uh, LSPs and translators will be using uh, that type of tools. So I'm going to try to make a short video just to give an idea of how that can be used and how it should be used in my view. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get right into it, shall we? So what we'll do is we'll now discuss uh, how uh, this affects each uh, type of users. But let's uh, first uh, run a little bit of uh, basics so we can get some basic knowledge about it. Uh, what you can do with a custom uh, machine translation is you can uh, build it from the ground up if you wish or you can get a pre-built engine and build on the top of it. You can import in it your TMs and your glossaries so that uh, your machine translation will react according to these. Then you can tweak it uh, to have it output uh, the way you want, importing some rules into it so that you can get the type of output uh, that is uh, the one you, you would like to expect. Then uh, your engine, of course, as you will be importing data into it, will be learning uh, from your style and on output, it will try to keep it as well. And of course, as you keep adding to it, well, you get constant improvement. Then what you can do with it, you can get it into a process of human testing and improvement with actual translators looking at your engine and talking to you about actual results and uh, editing times. And of course, uh, you can have uh, your custom output with uh, your custom characters, number formatting, and etc. Now, let's talk about it from the translator's side. What can the translator do with a custom MT? Well, it will he will connect it into his CAD tool just as a regular MT. And of course, from his own CAD tool, he will be able to still access his own uh, translation memories and glossaries. So uh, the idea is, for example, if you have a threshold set in your CAD tool, well, everything that comes below, for example, a 70% match from your uh, translation memory, well, the entries will be generated by the machine translation. Uh, this will uh, help the translator to stick easier to the style because he will get suggestions that are custom made from uh, the machine translation that will then enable, of course, faster work. Uh, we could ask the translator to be involved with instant engine update by sending uh, what is being translated to uh, the machine translation so that it gets updated. The translator can be involved in testing the engine, uh, in improving the engine, and this can help to, to improve the relationship between a translator and an editor since uh, the basis for work uh, gets improved quality. Now, let's take a, a moment to talk about what can happen from uh, the language service provider's side. Let's look at it. Well, it will enable him to stick to the specific needs of bigger clients. No? Uh, so, for example, he can have uh, one big engine per big client. So, that will help to output quality constantly improving as work is done. As we said before, what is being translated can then be used to update the engine to make it work better. So in time, this uh, helps to have faster translation uh, done. So you, the translation team can work faster with better uh, suggestions coming from the engine. Of course, this allows for faster editing since there is less errors added into the process as uh, things progress. 
Uh, you will get minimal text formatting. So if your engine uh, has all its uh, configuration done correctly, you can output uh, with the type of formatting you want for characters and all, like we said before. And you can set up uh, teams of reviewers uh, to talk to you about the real quality of the text that your engine gives them. So uh, that is very good. And in time, what it enables an LSP is to handle a higher number of jobs. So that improves it for everyone. Now, let's uh, talk a moment about some limits uh, that have uh, these engines at the moment. Uh, the first one is uh, training the community. So the community doesn't know really uh, how to work with these. Uh, and as time goes by, well, um, uh, both translators and uh, language service providers will know better how to handle these tools. Uh, the CAT tooling integration, well, uh, many CAT tools already uh, are ready to work with uh, these uh, custom machine translations, but they're not ready yet to send uh, the data from the translator to update it. But that's coming in the months to come. So maybe when you're watching this video, this feature is already released. Uh, the price. Well, at the moment, it's a bit expensive. So it's only something that can make sense for a language service provider to use. Uh, but as time goes by, uh, it's likely that price will go down. And of course, uh, transcreation. Well, that's something that is inherently human. So it will be difficult to have a machine uh, translate in a way that would be creative. So we'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, uh, let's stick with human translators for that. So now that we've explained this, it's up to you now to make your mind. Do you feel like you're ready to work with a robot? Maybe be friends with it? Well, we'll all wait and see and make sure uh, you give me your opinion on that in the comments uh, below. So as I said at the outset, uh, it's something that is rather new and uh, that's why I'm offering at the moment uh, a training on the pros.com platforms. It's uh, aimed at LSPs that want to learn uh, how these tools work and that can be a very useful help. Uh, why? Because, well, they don't give you a 30-day free trial, so you have to pay to use them. So that would be a way to approach uh, the matter and learn more about it. So if, if you are interested in it, uh, there'll be a link in the video description and uh, I'll try to put a link to as well to uh, the video description for that training when I have that ready. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe. I hope uh, you will do that. That'll be useful. And if you want to watch another video, well, click right here. And I'll be talking to you in the next one. Bye bye.